Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. There is one body and one spirit. There is one hope in God's all to us. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. One God. Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Grant, O merciful God, that your church, being gathered together in unity by your Holy Spirit, may show forth your power among all peoples to the glory of your name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. Now a new king arose over Egypt who did not know Joseph. He said to his people, Look, the Israelite people are more numerous and more powerful than we. Come, let us deal shrewdly with them, or they will increase and, in the event of war, join our enemies and fight against us and escape from the land. Therefore they set taskmasters over them to oppress them with forced labor. They built supply cities, Paltham and Ramses, Pharaoh. But the more they were oppressed, the more they multiplied and spread, so that the Egypt's Egyptians came to dread the Israelites. The Egyptians became ruthless in imposing tasks on the Israelites and made their lives bitter with hard service in mortar and brick and in every kind of field labor. They were ruthless in all the tasks that they imposed on them. The king of Egypt said to the Hebrew midwives, one of whom was Shifra and the other Pua, when you act as midwives to the Hebrew women and see them on the birth stool, if it is a boy, kill him. But if it is a girl, she may live. But the midwives feared God. They did not do as the king of Egypt commanded them but they let the boys live. So the king of Egypt summoned the midwives and said to them, why have you done this and allowed the boys to live? The midwife said to Pharaoh, because the Hebrew women are not like the Egyptian women, 
for they are vigorous and give birth before the midwife comes to them. So God dealt well with the midwives, and the people multiplied and became very strong. And because the midwives feared God, he gave them families. Then Pharaoh commanded all his people, Every boy that is born to the Hebrews you shall throw into the Nile, but you shall let every girl live. Now a man from the house of Levi went and married a Levite woman. The woman conceived and bore a son. And when she saw that he was a fine baby, she hid him three months. When she could hide him no longer, she got a papyrus basket for him and plastered it with bitumen and pitch. She put the child in it and placed it among the reeds on the bank of the river. His sister stood at a distance to see what would happen to him. The daughter of Pharaoh came down to bathe at the river while her attendants walked beside the river. She saw the basket among the reeds and sent her maid to bring it. When she opened it, she saw the child. He was crying and she took pity on him. This must be one of the Hebrews' children, she said. Then his sister said to Pharaoh's daughter, Shall I go and get you a nurse from the Hebrew women to nurse the child for you? Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Yes. So the girl went and called the child's mother. Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Take this child and nurse it for me, and I will give you your wages. So the woman took the child and nursed it. When the child grew up, she brought him to Pharaoh's daughter and she took him as her son. She named him Moses because, she said, I drew him out of the water. The word of the Lord. Yeah. 
A reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God to present your bodies to be a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds, so that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. For by the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, not to think of yourself more highly than you ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. For as in one body we have many members, and not all the members have the same function, so we, who are many, are one body in Christ, and individually we are members one of another. We have gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, prophecy in proportion to faith, ministry in ministering, the teacher in teaching, the exhorter in exhortation, the giver in generosity, the leader in diligence, the compassionate in cheerfulness. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Thanks be
Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Now when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do people say that the Son of Man is? And they said, Some say John the Baptist, but others Elijah, and still others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then he sternly ordered the disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. A deacon and a pastor from the local church were standing by the side of the road, pounding a sign into the ground that read, The end is near. Turn yourself around now before it's too late. As a car sped past them, the driver yelled out, Leave us alone, you religious nuts. From the curve, they heard screeching tires and a big splash. The pastor turned to the deacon and asked him, Do you think the sign should just say, Bridge out? <laughs> Sometimes it's hard to find the right words, or even good words. That's the problem that Sonia Lang faced when she was working as a translator in Toronto, Canada. She was feeling depressed and overwhelmed. And none of the words she knew in French, English, or German were giving her any relief. And so she went and created her own language, something simple to ease her mind and clarify her thoughts. And she called it Toki Pona, good language and gave it just 120 words. Ale li pona, she said to herself. Words meaning, everything will be okay. This new language helped to ease her mind, and then, much to Sonia's surprise, the language took off. And there are now thousands of Toki Pona speakers, people who sing Toki Pona songs, write Toki Pona poems, and chat with a Toki Pona vocabulary. This is all part of a strange and surprising surge in newly created languages. Back in the day, only Star Trek loving Klingon imitators got excited about invented vocabularies. But now, constructed languages are flourishing on the internet and creeping into the real world. Not surprisingly, the inventors of these languages have created a word for what they do. Con lang. It's short for constructed languages. 
on land. Today's Gospel for Matthew is full of invented vocabulary. From start to finish, this passage presents a fresh language for faithfulness, one that can continue to give us the new words that we need. Now, oddly enough, this verbal creativity begins with a location. The story starts with Jesus entering the district of Caesarea Philippi, about 20 miles north of the Sea of Galilee. Now, this spot had gone through some name changes of its own, morphing from a Canaanite site for the worship of Baal into a place called Peneus, where the Greek god Pan was revered. And then Herod the Great came on the scene and built a temple to Caesar Augustus. And later, Herod's son Philip enlarged the town and renamed it after Tiberius Caesar and himself. So that's how the dis name of the district became Caesarea Philippi. It marked a partnership between Caesar and Philip in true Conlang fashion. But does this really matter? Well, Matthew thinks so, since he takes the time to mention the name of the place, unlike his fellow gospel writer, Luke. Matthew probably wished to emphasize that Simon Peter's confession took place in a spot that had pagan associations. It matters to Matthew that Simon calls Jesus the Messiah in the shadow of a Roman temple in a place where pagans had worshipped their gods for centuries. Labeling Jesus as the Messiah is a real slap in the face to all of the false messiahs who were revered on that spot. Herod the Great, Caesar Augustus, Philip, Tiberius Caesar. Caesarea Philippi. That's a spot with conlang significance. It's a risky place for Simon to call Jesus Messiah. Maybe even a dangerous place. The name Caesarea doesn't reduce anxiety like the invented language Tokipona. No, it increases it. In fact, a few years later, Roman troops returned to Caesarea after destroying the city of Jerusalem. And they threw some of their Jewish captives to wild animals there not a kind and gentle community. We have our own Caesarea Philippi's today, and we're challenged to take a Christian stand in the midst of them. They include the Caesarea of high school, where cliques are way more hurtful than those in high school musical. The Caesarea of college, where hookups and hard partying can do lifelong damage. The Caesarea of the workplace, where cutthroat competition leaves people out in the cold. The Caesarea of politics, where winning elections has become more important than public service. The Caesarea of retirement, where people feel powerless, forgotten, and ignored. Caesarea Philippi is still a place with conlang significance. It's in this anxious, risky, and dangerous location that we are challenged to respond to the call of Jesus Christ. Jesus says to his followers in the shadow of the Roman temple, who do people say that the Son of Man is? The disciples look around nervously, not wanting to attract the attention of any well-armed legionaries, and they answer, uh, some say John the Baptist, but others Elijah, still others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. The disciples figure they cannot get arrested for simply pointing out what other people are saying. But Jesus presses them. But who do you say that I am? Now Jesus is addressing not just one disciple with the word you, but is speaking to all of the disciples in the second person plural. Down here below the Mason-Dixon line, this would be translated, but who do y'all say that I am? And 
only one of them answers, Simon, you are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Simon calls Jesus Messiah. And this is a bold, conlang confession. For the Messiah is the anointed one, the long-awaited king who's expected to save his people from oppression. Jesus is the son of the living God, not the son of a dead God like Baal or Pan or Caesar Augustus. The confession of Simon is not polite church talk. It's a courageous political statement. Talk like this can get you killed. Now, we can be thankful that we don't live in a country where it's dangerous to confess that Jesus is the Messiah. But there's still plenty of Christian conlang that remains radically countercultural. The language of generosity in a world of self interest. The language of forgiveness in a world of retaliation. The language of compassion in a world of harsh judgment. The language of encouragement in a world of malicious gossip. The language of worship and praise in a world of relentless criticism and complaint. This is the language that we are challenged to speak today, the conlang of faithful discipleship. It is as bold and surprising as the words of Simon in the district of Caesarea Philippi. Jesus is excited by what he's hearing, and he says to Simon, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. Jesus responds to the language of Simon with some new words of his own. You are Petros, he says. And on this Petra, I will build my church. Jesus says that Peter is the foundation stone on which he will build the new Christian community. Now, notice that it is Jesus who builds the church. Peter is simply the foundation. Jesus continues to have an active role in constructing the Christian community as a spiritual house. And there will be many living stones added to this building over the centuries. Like living stones, let yourselves be built into a spiritual house, Peter goes on to write in his first letter. To be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. So Peter is the rock, the foundation, and each of us is a living stone. The house that Jesus began to build with Peter continues to be constructed. And the gates of death have not prevailed against it. Now the word for church that is used in this passage is ecclesia, a term used only twice in the gospel. It's another example of conlang a piece of vocabulary coined to describe the new Christian community. The Greek word ekklesia, translated church, literally means those who are called out. Together, these words provide us with a rich new language for discipleship. This conlang is going to be surprising to some, and it will fill others with anxiety. There's nothing comfortable or calming about walking into a risky location, taking a countercultural position, and joining with others in the work of the Christian community. But for those who dare to speak this language, Jesus promises that the power of death will not be victorious. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, says Jesus to Peter, the foundation rock. I will give you access to my life-giving and death-destroying teachings. We have a powerful Messiah, a rock-solid Christian community, and the keys to the kingdom of heaven. 
with such amazing gifts from God, the words of Sonia Lang are bound to be true. Ale li hona. Everything will be okay. The Liturgy for Holy Baptism has pound on page 8 in the service leaflet. I invite the baptismal party to please stand. The rest of you may remain seated. The candidate for Holy Baptism will now be presented. Will you be responsible for seeing that the child you present is brought up in the Christian faith and life? Will you, by your prayers and witness, help this child to grow into the full stature of Christ? Do you renounce Satan and all the spiritual forces of wickedness that rebel against God? Do you renounce the evil powers of this world, which corrupt and destroy the creatures of God? Do you renounce all sinful desires that draw you from the love of God? Do you turn to Jesus Christ and accept him as your Savior? Do you put your whole trust in his grace and love? Do you promise to follow and obey him as your Lord? Will you who witness these vows do all in your power to support this person in his life in Christ? Let us join with he who is committing himself to Christ and renew our own baptismal covenant. You believe in God the Father. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. And he ascended into heaven. And he is seated at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again. Do you believe in God the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of bread, and in the prayers? I will with God's help. Will you persevere in resisting evil? And, whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord? I will, with God's help. Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? I will, with God's help. Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? I will, with God's help. Will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? I will, with God's help.
Let us now pray for this person who is to receive the sacrament of new birth. Deliver him, O Lord, from the way of sin and death. Lord, hear our prayer. Open his heart to your grace and truth. Lord, hear our prayer. Fill him with your holy and life-giving spirit. Lord, hear our prayer. Keep him in the path, faith and communion of your holy church. Lord, hear our prayer. Teach him to love others in the power of the spirit. Lord, hear our prayer. Send him into the world in witness to your love. Bring him to the fullness of your peace and glory. Grant, O Lord, that all who are baptized into the death of Jesus Christ, your Son, may live in the power of his resurrection and look for him to come again in glory, who lives and reigns now and forever. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. We thank you, Almighty God, for the gift of water. Over it, the Holy Spirit moved in the beginning of creation. Through it, you led the children of Israel out of their bondage in Egypt into the land of promise. In it, your son Jesus received the baptism of John and was anointed by the Holy Spirit as the Messiah, the Christ, to lead us through his death and resurrection, from the bondage of sin into everlasting life. We thank you, Father, for the water of baptism. In it we are buried with Christ in his death. By it we share in his resurrection. Through it we are reborn by the Holy Spirit. Therefore, in joyful obedience to your Son, we bring into his fellowship those who come to him in faith, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Now sanctify this water, we pray you, by the power of your Holy Spirit, that those who here are cleansed from sin and born again may continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ, our Savior. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. John Lee, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that by water and the Holy Spirit you have bestowed upon this your servant the forgiveness of sin and have raised him to the new life of grace. Sustain him, O Lord, in your Holy Spirit. Give him an inquiring and discerning heart, the courage to will and to persevere, a spirit to know and to love you, and the gift of joy and wonder in all your works. Amen. John Lee, you are sealed by the Holy Spirit in baptism and marked as Christ's own forever. John Lee, receive the light of Christ as a sign that you have passed from darkness into light. Shine as his light in the world to the glory of God the Father.
let us welcome the newly baptized. We receive you into the household of God. Confess the faith of Christ crucified, proclaim his resurrection, and share with us in his eternal priesthood. Peace of the Lord be always with you. Peace, everyone. Please be seated. Welcome to St. Andrews on this, the 13th Sunday after Pentecost. Glad to have you worshiping here with us this morning, and good to have those uh, worshiping from home with us as well. Inviting everyone to fellowship time after the service over there in the parish hall, which can be reached through that door back there on your left and then directly across the courtyard. We're also in need of coffee hour hosts, so you'll find the sign-up sheet there on the dining room table there in the center of the parish hall. If you'd like to join the outreach committee, they're having a meeting after the service today up on the third floor, so 11.45 or so up there on the third floor, outreach committee meeting. Newcomer's Dinner is coming up next month, Thursday, September 28th, 6.30 p.m. at the Rectory. You can read about that in the service leaflet. If you're new to St. Andrews, basically since COVID in the last three years, uh, you're invited to come and join us for that. Uh, RSVP to Lori in the office, and her phone number can be found there in the bulletin. Also, if you haven't had a chance to do so, please fill out your little uh, parish information uh, directory card here. Uh, you can find these cards in the back of the table there as you exit the church today as we're doing our new online parish directory. So we'd like everybody to participate and fill one of these out when you can. Ascribe to the Lord the honor to his name, bring offerings, and come into his courts.
Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. God of all power, ruler of the universe, you are worthy of glory and praise. Glory to you forever and ever. At your command, all things came to be. The vast expanse of interstellar space, galaxies, suns, the planets in their courses, and this fragile earth, our island home. From the primal elements you brought forth the human race and blessed us with memory, reason, and skill. You made us the rulers of creation, but we turned against you and betrayed your trust, and we turned against one another. Again and again you called us to return. Through prophets and sages, you revealed your righteous law, and in the fullness of time, you sent your only son, born of a woman, to fulfill your law, to open for us the way of freedom and peace. And therefore, we praise you, joining with the heavenly chorus with prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and with all those in every generation who have looked to you in hope to proclaim with them your glory in their unending hymn. <laughs> And so, Father, we who have been redeemed by him and made a new people by water and the Spirit, now bring before you these gifts. Sanctify them by the Holy Spirit to be the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord. On the night he was betrayed, he took bread, said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his friends and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, gave thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering now his work in, of redemption and offering to you this sacrifice of thanksgiving, Lord God of our fathers, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, open our eyes to see your hand at work in the world about us. Deliver us from the presumption of coming to this table for solace only and not for strength, for pardon only and not for renewal. Let the grace of this Holy Communion make us one body, one spirit in Christ, that we may worthily serve the world in his name. Lord, to us to bread. 
Accept these prayers and praises, Father, through Jesus Christ, our great high priest, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit, your church gives honor, glory, and worship from generation to generation. Now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you forever.
in love to serve, go in peace and love to serve the Lord.